A nucleus consisting of a single proton is very common in the universe and here on Earth. We call it hydrogen. And as you know, it fuels stars and is the most common element in your body. We have oceans full of the stuff. Next, let's add the other nucleon, a neutron, and let's start building the universe. Here we are with hydrogen, a single proton, and the neutron. Both have atomic mass number of one, meaning that a proton and a neutron are close enough to the same mass that ordinarily we don't have to sweat the fine points. Now watch what happens as I add a neutron to light hydrogen. Voila! Presto changeo, and the neutron is absorbed into the light hydrogen nucleus, and it's changed into deuterium, or heavy hydrogen. Chemically, heavy hydrogen and light hydrogen are pretty much the same, both being hydrogen with a lone electron orbiting the nucleus. The nuclear properties of deuterium are very different from light hydrogen, however. It is this heavy hydrogen that makes heavy water, which was of such interest during the Second World War, for use in production of A-bombs, and later, after the war, in the production of H-bombs. If we add another neutron to deuterium, we form tritium, yet another form of hydrogen. However, this is where the fun starts. Every twelve and a half years, half of the tritium nuclei will spontaneously convert themselves to helium-3, a rare but naturally occurring form of helium. And its chemical properties have changed completely. Instead of being a form of hydrogen, it's changed itself into a noble gas. It's also changed itself in terms of nuclear reactions. Tritium is used in H-bombs. Helium-3 readily absorbs neutrons, but that's it. No big bangs. How is it that tritium can change itself spontaneously to helium? Light hydrogen, deuterium, and tritium are all hydrogen isotopes. That is, they all have the same number of protons, in this case one, but differing numbers of neutrons, none, one, or two. Like all isotopes, their chemical properties are very similar because chemistry is largely governed by the bonds between the outer electrons. But their nuclear properties are often very different. It's actually even more interesting than you think. The nucleus, if you remember, is very, very small, and all these positive charges from the protons are all squeezed together in this teeny tiny little space. They don't want to be there, much less some somehow making things more stable as they are squeezed together. What in the world is happening here? The short answer is that we are seeing the effect of one of the four forces in the universe, namely the nuclear strong force. Let's look at the relative strengths of these four forces and formally name them. If we arbitrarily set the strength of the nuclear strong force to be one, then we find the other forces are small indeed. The electromagnetic or coulombic uh, forces are less than 1% of the strength of the nuclear strong force. The weak force, which operates only in the nucleus, as does the strong force, is only 1 times 10 to the minus 5th as strong as the nuclear strong force. And finally, poral gravity is 10 to the minus 39th times as strong as the strong force. Poral gravity. Interestingly, though, in all modern theories of cosmology, it is gravity who finally wins the struggle and overcomes all the other forces. The ranges of these forces vary wildly also. The range of the nuclear strong force is such that it cannot reach across a medium-sized nucleus. The coulombic forces reach to infinity. The weak forces range is a hundred times less than the range of the strong force. Wow, that's small. And gravity is again infinite in its reach. So there you go. 
All you need to do to make stable nuclei is just to add lots of neutrons, right? They add nuclear strong force, but do not add coulombic repulsion. Well, for better or worse, it's not that simple. It's a kind of Zen thing. It's all about balance. Just as with the decay of tritium, too many neutrons make a nucleus unstable also. Of all the combinations of protons and neutrons, there are only a couple of hundred that are stable. A particular combination of protons and neutrons is called a nuclide. Let's look at the stable nuclides and some of the unstable ones also. Since we're defining things, let's be specific about terms I've been throwing around. Z, the atomic number, is the number of protons in a nucleus. A, the mass number, is the sum of Z and the number of neutrons. In the name U-235, the 235 is the mass number. We know that uranium has an atomic number of 92 because it has 92 protons. So the number of neutrons by difference is 143. As we've seen, isotopes have the same Z but differing A's. U-235 and U-238 are isotopes. A nuclide is some specified combination of protons and neutrons. An isobar is a group of nucleons that have the same mass number but differing atomic numbers. A radionuclide is a nuclide that is unstable and decays. Beta decay is when a neutron is changed into a proton and an electron and an antineutrino is ejected from the nucleus. Beta decay also has an antimatter decay where a proton is changed into a neutron and an anti-electron, also known as a positron, is ejected from the nucleus along with a neutrino. 